Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast, brought to you by the last man standing with loserpool.com. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simu. And on today's edition, we're going to be looking ahead to the trip to the London Stadium on Monday night. Arsenal take on West Ham United. We were, of course, beaten there last season, so it's not a game that we're particularly looking forward to, given our current uh, form as well and our away form this season, which hasn't improved in the slightest. On this edition, we're going to be looking ahead to that game and we're also going to be discussing the rumours linking Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang with a move away from North London. He's been linked with a move to Real Madrid and potentially Luka Jovic could be coming the other way depending on uh, where you've been reading your news this morning. So let's start uh, by focusing on the game uh, at the London Stadium. Of course, there's a real downbeat feeling uh, around Arsenal at the moment. You know, the, the results are not there. The performances are not there. The supporters seem disinterested. There's, um, there was noticeably a low crowd again uh, the other night against Brighton despite it being Freddie Lundberg's first uh, home game in charge and that was disappointing to see but on the other hand it is very easy to sit here and have a go at those who, who didn't bother attending but ultimately there is a reason why they're feeling like that they're feeling like that because the club has left them feeling like that performances have left them feeling like that and there's probably a lack of belief in this current ownership and in the current management structure to turn this around and that is the real real problem here Let's look ahead uh, to West Ham United, of course. It is, you know, it's a game that, in theory, Arsenal should be going into confident of a victory. But that's not the case at the moment. And West Ham are struggling too this season. Um, you know, don't forget that. However, with Arsenal, that there is a far greater expectation and there's a huge weight on our shoulders. And going into this game not being the favourites is not the kind of state Arsenal ever want to find themselves in but unfortunately we are in that position West Ham you know they started this weekend in 16th place but they got a really encouraging win at Stamford Bridge last weekend I know they were beaten midweek um, by Wolves but you know Pellegrini will will be buoyant after that win at Chelsea he'll be confident in an upturn uh, and it looks like he's going to get a little bit more time there and perhaps uh, he can guide them to another win and, and this time against another London rival which will be us now we went there last season um, we lost Declan Rice got the goal if I'm not mistaken I was at the game um, and I was really angry after it really disappointed and it was one of the games in which I started to question Unai Emery's thinking and really wonder whether he was the right man for Arsenal fast forward you know almost a year and, and it's obvious that he wasn't the right man for Arsenal um, but I think that was one of the, the catalyst games for me where I started to wonder whether or not he's the right man for the job now if we look at the head-to-head -head between the two clubs We've met 46 times in Premier League history. Um, Arsenal have won 29 of those. West Ham have won just eight. Uh, three of those coming at home, five of them on the road. Arsenal have a far, far superior record in this fixture historically. But as we know, given the way Arsenal are playing at the moment, that doesn't really mean a great deal. If we look at the recent results, uh, as I mentioned, last season we were beaten 1-0 at the London Stadium. We beat them uh, at the Emirates very early on in the campaign uh, by three goals to one prior to that we beat them at the Emirates 4-1 uh, that was in April 2018 and we drew 0-0 that season um, at the London Stadium I remember that game I remember Jack Wilshire in that game I don't know why that was what springs to mind um, and prior to that so five games ago Arsenal beat West Ham 3-0 at the Emirates now when you look at the form guides of the two sides there's not a great deal of difference West Ham have lost four out of their last five. Their only win coming, as I mentioned, it, during that trip to Stamford Bridge where they ran, ran out, sorry, 1-0 winners uh, thanks to Cresswell's goal. Arsenal haven't won in their last five and it consists of two defeats and three draws. The defeats coming at, away to Leicester and at home to Brighton. But of course, there were some disappointing draws uh, at home to Wolves, at home to Southampton and away to Norwich in and amongst that. At the start of this weekend, and, and I appreciate that by the time this goes out, uh, there will have been uh, some more Premier League games and Arsenal could find themselves in 14th or 15th position. But as it stands heading into the weekend, uh, Arsenal are in 10th, West Ham are in 6th, as I mentioned. Um, we've lost four, they've lost seven. We've won four, they've won four. Arsenal's biggest problem this season has been the number of draws uh, and we've drawn seven times uh, during this campaign, which is, is not good at all. In terms of top scorers uh, between the two, clubs Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang leads the way by an absolute country mile he's got 10 in the league this season uh, Alexander Lacazette is in second behind him with five and Sebastian Haller has four um 
In terms of assists, it's actually a couple of West Ham players that are leading the charge. Felipe Anderson um, and, of course, Manuel Lanzini have two. Danny Ceballos has two as well, uh, but he's sandwiched in between those two West Ham players. Now, it's... You know, it's difficult to go into this game with much confidence given the run we're on. You know, it's the worst run that Arsenal have been on for 40 odd years. 40 years. And I keep talking about what a dodgy trip it is and how, you know, it's not going to be easy. But equally, it's not going to be easy for West Ham United because they're on a terrible run as well. Put that Chelsea game to one side for a moment and their season, after starting quite promisingly, has actually been a bit of a disaster. Um we hoped that when Freddie Lundberg came in, we would see that new manager bounce. Uh, and at the time of recording, Everton have just beaten Chelsea. And guess what? They had a new manager bounce. We haven't seen that yet uh, with Freddie Lundberg. And I appreciate that the situation got pretty dire by the time Unai Emery was sacked. And maybe we're being a little bit harsh, but I expected to see a bit more inspiration. And I expected to see some of the players almost you know, re-energize and, and feel as though the shackles had been taken off and really push on. But that hasn't happened um, so far anyway. And that's a real concern. And, you know, as far as hiring a permanent manager goes, there's no word on that. And um, I'm not quite sure how to read the situation. Are we struggling to attract those that are on our shortlist because of uh, the direction in which we're traveling, because of the limited funds, if you're believing those reports? Or are AFC actually in the process of doing a deal. And that's why everything's gone so quiet. That's why they've been so discreet. We heard the other day that there was a 14-man shortlist. It's not a very short list, if you ask me. Um, let me know who you guys would have in the comments. But for me, it's become clear, even so soon in Freddie Jungberg's tenure, that we need a experienced, top-quality manager to come in and steady the ship and turn this ship around and get us back on course because... We are in real danger of having a real disaster season as it stands. Now, I mentioned uh, earlier on about the rumours linking Aubameyang with a move to Real Madrid. Um, and there are lots of fans talking about this on social media, saying it's time to cash in on him. Let's get rid of him. Um, you know, he won't sign a new contract. Last year will be his last year. He's the wrong side of 30. Let's move him on and, and do the deal. Get Luka Jovic in. But for me... The, the real question here is not whether I'd allow Aubameyang to go, not whether Luka Jovic would be a, a good signing for Arsenal, but it's more around why do our star players keep wanting to leave? And it's because things are not going well on the pitch, and that is a fundamental problem. You can talk about the profit and loss sheets, and Arsenal announced that they'd actually made a loss this time around pre-tax. Um, from what I understand, I haven't looked at the figures properly, but when I had a glance earlier, that's what I saw. Correct me if I'm wrong, but... That doesn't concern players. What concerns players is what we're doing on the football pitch. And Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang would be the next one in a long line of players since Arsenal moved to the Emirates that have just simply felt the club's ambitions do not match their own. And it's all good saying, get rid of him if he doesn't want to be here. That's not the issue here for me. The issue is we have a fundamental problem at Arsenal Football Club where top, top footballers keep on wanting to leave. And that needs to be addressed. It really, really does. That is the issue here. Um, moving on to, to my starting 11, I'm going to go with uh, the 11 that I would pick. It's not necessarily what I believe Freddie will do, but this is the 11 I would pick. So, of course, uh, Burned Leno in goal. I'd go with Hector Bayer in at right. <laughs> would I? Yeah, I would. I'd go with Hector Bayer in at right back. I think he looks off the pace, but... I really feel that the only way he's going to get up to speed is by playing games of football. So for me, Hector Bellerin, um will continue at right back. Left back, um, I'd go with Serge Kolasinac again because I think he's done all right in the last two games. I think he's been one of Arsenal's better players. I know that doesn't say much, but, you know, Kieran Tierney looked off the pace when he's played so far. And, you know, maybe he's struggling with fitness. We kind of signed him injured, didn't we? So... On the basis that I think Kalasinac has done okay in the last couple of games, I'd pick him again. Um, so he'd stay at left back for me. Centre halves, I think you've got to go with David Lewis. Uh, he has made mistakes, but we're just not 
exactly blessed with choice, are we, when it comes to looking at central defensive options? So I'd go with David Lewis and I'd bring Mustafi back in. I thought Socrates showed exactly why he shouldn't be in the team um, against uh, Brighton the other night. And the thing with Mustafi is at least he allows you to play football a little bit more comfortably. At least with him in the team, we pushed right up to the halfway line. We squeezed our opponents. And we were able to do that because he gave us a little bit of extra pace at the back. When you play with Socrates... You keep seeing it. Arsenal keeps sinking to the edge of their box. They're trying to play it out of the back four, and it's not happening. And we're putting ourselves under increased pressure. When I saw Socrates back in the team the other night, it was as though I was watching Unai Emery's side again, and that was really, really disappointing. So my back four would be Bayerin, Mustafi, Lewis, and Kalasinac. In the midfield, I continue with Granit Xhaka, because... He's been probably Arsenal's best player in the two games since he's returned. So for me, Granit Xhaka has got his head down. He's doing the simple things right. He's pulled that shit to one side. Nice to see that there haven't been fans getting onto his back um, at the Emirates Stadium because for me, it's water under the bridge. It's done. We're in dire straits. We need all the help we can get. So for me, Granit Xhaka starts um, alongside. I'm going to go with Lucas Torreira again, and I, I didn't think he was great uh, the other night, but. I feel like those two give us the best balance and they need to form some sort of partnership and that's only going to happen if they play together and I didn't really think that they were the problem uh, against Brighton on Thursday so I'd continue with those two. Um, at further forward I'd go with Mesut Ozil. His performances haven't been good in the last couple of the games and I know he played at the sort of number 10 role in the second half on Thursday but ultimately under Freddie for the most part he's been forced to operate from the left wing and that for me is not Mesut Ozil's position. He's got bags and bags of talent. We all know that. Let's try and get the best out of it. Put him back where he belongs, and that is in the number 10 role. Um, up front, I'd go with Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang through the middle. Um, I know Lacazette scored the other night, but for me, we are wasting our biggest talent. We are wasting our best player by playing him on the flanks. He's almost redundant when he plays out there for, for large parts of the game, and that's simply not good enough for a man who won the golden boot last season you've got to get him in the team and you've got to get him doing what he does best and that is scoring goals and that comes by playing through the middle um I'd go with Martinelli on the left wing. I think that Martinelli, every time he's been involved, has shown something. Even when he came on against Brighton, he got his head to a, a cross. Granted, there wasn't enough power on the cross and it was difficult for him to score, but he directed it really well towards the bottom corner, forced the save out of the keeper. And for me, he's a live wire all the time. He works hard. He's got everything and this guy needs to be playing. If we had a ton of experienced players who were performing week in, week out, I'd be a little bit more cautious with, with Gabriel Martinelli. But we haven't got anything better. So get Gabriel Martinelli in the side. And for me, on the right, you drop Alexander Lacazette. He, he doesn't play at West Ham. That's my personal opinion. And you go with Nicolas Pepe and we look to hit them on the break with the pace and the power uh, that you get out of Aubameyang, out of Pepe and out of Martinelli with Ozil providing them. Fingers crossed Xhaka and Torreira can provide that screen for the defence and you attack them. You you go there and you try and play them. That's one thing I have given Freddie praise for. I thought at Norwich we did that. We went for them from the very off. We didn't turn up uh, against Brighton and Freddie was quite vocal about that and he said that, didn't he, in his post-match uh, interview. But for me, there's a fine line between being honest with the fans and maintaining good communication lines so they understand how you're feeling, they understand what's going on. But also, you've got to be careful not to completely kill the confidence of a group who are really, really uh, fragile at this moment in time. So I think Freddie through picking up experience will learn from that a little bit and I think he'll slightly adapt his approach the longer he is in the job um that's pretty much it I think I'm just gonna have a quick glance at my notes make sure I didn't miss anything out um from from what I wanted to say that's pretty much it um don't forget to subscribe like share all the usual stuff if you're listening via the audio please please do leave us a review um that is really really important and the match uh, review will come out on Tuesday morning so around about 10 a.m you can expect the notification uh, if you haven't got those turned on make sure you do so that you never miss an episode and we'll be bringing you uh, a reaction to that game and we'll be delving into the ins and outs of what is no doubt going to be an interesting encounter. That's how I'm going to put it. So until then, take care, guys. Enjoy your weekends and uh, we'll be back on Tuesday. Ciao.